everybody, this is Kelsifer here, and welcome to a new little video. This is going to probably be the first video for a little project that I'm doing. Since it is the month of October, which means that it's Halloween and it's spooky times, I decided I'm going to go ahead and do a little project where I read to you all a few of some scary stories. Now, I did this last year, and I wanted to try to make it a daily thing, but... That completely fell down the drain and I lost confidence of it within like the first two weeks. <laughs> but this time I'm going to be doing something a bit differently th this year. Um, what I'm going to be doing is, as I am telling a story, I am going to be doing a speed paint based on that little story. And also, I will not be doing this weekly. As a matter of fact, I have a little schedule planned. Um, on Wednesdays particularly, except for on Halloween, that will be on Tuesday the 30th. So like every Wednesday, except the last week of October, I will be doing a creepy story with the speed paint. And then on Fridays and Mondays, I'm going to be doing some Let's Play series of some creepy games that I like. Um, on Friday, um, this week, the 5th, I'm going to start playing Slender the Arrival. And, uh, on Monday, we'll just see what happens then. But I digress. Today's story that we're going to be doing is a story called Persuaded. I'll go ahead and read this to you now. If you wish to follow along, there will be a link to the original story in the description. It's been two weeks since this whole thing started. It all started with a tanker accident. It was all over the news. Everyone thought it was just another oil spill. There were plenty of volunteers. Plenty of people wanting to help the poor defenseless animals. Plenty of victims. Within hours of the tanker accident, it started happening. The animals had gone crazy. They were scratching and biting the cleanup volunteers. And they said that it was an adverse effect to whatever was in that tanker. Rescue workers were still trying to get the crew out of the ship. And they could hear screaming inside. Screams to open the doors. But that's when it all went to hell. As soon as they cut that door open. There were six minutes of broadcast before it went silent. Six minutes of screaming and agony. The ship crew attacked the rescue workers like rabid baboons, breaking bones and tearing flesh. The people on the shore weren't faring any better. Those that had been attacked by animals were attacking everyone else. It was worse than any war zone report. It was sheer brutality. And yet the broadcast still went on for six minutes. Six minutes, and then blank faces. Nobody could explain what was happening. They tried to continue with the regular news, the economy, the weather, a cute human interest story, but they couldn't make us unsee what we saw. I tried to continue with my regular existence, but every time I switched on the news or walked by a newsstand, it was there. This big mystery. They had some explanations, some kind of infection, brain parasites, but it didn't matter. It wasn't an infection we were afraid of. It was them. Four days after the initial report, a state of emergency was raised. And yet we'd all seen this before. Every zombie movie ever. People didn't know who to trust. People were stockpiling food and weapons. Some tried to flee, but it seemed every zombie movie was right. And they didn't make it. Three days later, they arrived in my town. I expected moans, shuffling corpses, dismemberment, but that's where the movies lied. They ran through the streets, screaming. I remember running to my front door as fast as I could, locking, barricading, doing anything to make sure it would stay shut, and then I headed for the window. I was on the second story and I could see the carnage. They were unstoppable. They were aware. A group of them made their way through a building across the street. They jumped straight through plate glass windows. Even the shards slicing through them made no difference. They just kept coming. My barricade wasn't going to hold. I rushed around my flat, grabbing supplies and jamming it into the most secure room of the flat. I went back for one last look across the street, and I wish I hadn't. In a second story window, my face met one of theirs. They knew where I was. I quickly dashed into the room and locked the door. I don't have any kind of panic room or a secure basement, so the safest place I could think of was my bathroom. No windows, one door with a lock. 
I had filled my sink and bathtub full of water so I could stay for a while. So I sat there in a dark room with the distant screams in my ears. I began to feel like I may have overreacted. It had been two hours and no sign of them. It actually got quieter and I thought they had moved on. Maybe I could leave the room, get to the kitchen, grab more food and wait it out. A crash came from the front door. The sound of someone running full force into the door and knocking down the barrier behind it. There were a couple more crashes before I knew they were inside. Rapid footsteps moving across the flat, a couple screams, and then a bang on the wall beside me. My eyes were open to their widest, even in the pitch black darkness of the room. Another bang, and another. And they knew I was there, and they knew I was scared. This was a zombie nightmare I had been expecting from the start. I had nowhere to run. There was only so much time before they would break in. I sat with my back to the door, hoping my extra weight would make it harder for them to get in. And then, it got worse. Why don't you open the door? A voice on the opposite side of the door. No screams or moans, just a quiet whispery voice and then more of them we've got for you just let us in you'll be happier if you open the door everything will be all right it's not so bad the whispery voices became a cacophony of noise trying to persuade me to break me to fool me i had heard that the moaning of zombies would drive people insane but this was worse a siren call I sat in the darkness and hoped and prayed that they'd get bored. But they don't get bored, and they don't leave. I managed to use the mirror to peek under the door, only to be greeted by horrible, unblinking eyes, blood-smeared faces, screams, and more horrible whispers. That... that was two days ago. I don't know what to do anymore. Maybe... Maybe it won't be so bad.